Hello ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I and PowerPoint Made Simple will take on a challenge. Each of us will have to create a slide for a client based on the same requirements. Every PowerPoint creator has a unique way of designing slides, so it will be very interesting to see what I and PowerPoint Made Simple will come up with. So let's go! Alright ladies and gentlemen, so here is the information that I have received from the client. New Zealand Adventures, some activities, call to action, and here are the requirements. I have to remove the white background, add some modern fonts, some icons, and add some animations. So remember, this is the same information that the PowerPoint Made Simple has received, and now each of us will have to do our best to redesign this slide. Alright, so let's jump into the action, and once I saw the client requirements, I instantly thought about inserting a full screen photo and adding three clickable points or three clickable buttons for each of the activities, and once you click on those buttons, you get additional information about those activities. So let's try to do just that and let's see how it goes. So let's insert a fresh blank new slide. And let's choose blank slide layout. We don't need any image placeholders. And now let's find a beautiful picture that we can use for our slide background. So let's use this picture. If you'd like to use the same picture, link is in the video description. And now let's just crop it to 16 by 9. All right, we can adjust the positioning of the slide, I mean of the photo inside of the crop. Now let's just drag it to the top left corner of the slide and drag it so that it covers the whole slide. Now let's give a name in the selection pane for this photo, for example BG, background, and that's awesome. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to actually go here to unsplash.com. I typed in New Zealand and I'm going to browse through here until I find a really nice picture that resonates with me and also what the actual message is on the slide. All right, so this is the picture that I ended up going with. So the next thing that goes through my head when adding a background image to a slide is now I need to add a box on top of it to make the image a little darker so it's easier to read the text I'm gonna put on top of the background image. So in order to fix that issue, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, Square, and I'm gonna hover over this entire image. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, Format Shape, and I'm gonna get rid of this line. And I'm also gonna choose a gradient fill. All right, so now we have these three best-selling activities. Whitewater rafting, swimming with dolphins, and zip lining. So let's create a clickable button for the zip lining activity. All right, let's start with the zip lining. And for that, we'll need to insert a circle. So let's go to Insert, Shapes, and let's choose a circle. You can hold down the Shift key to get a perfect circle. Let's move it here to the right side and let's add a white outline. All right, let's go to Format Shape. And let's make sure that we choose two points for our outline. I think that weight looks awesome. All right, and for the fill, let's choose black. And let's add some transparency, for example, 70%. And now let's just move this uh, circle here at the top. I think this way it will be much easier to work because now we will be adding an icon. As you remember, our client wants some icons. So let's just add this zip lining icon. Let's convert it to shape and let's make it white. Let's just move it to the top. And that's why I like to move, you know, sometimes the objects outside of the slide because as you can see accidentally, you can click the background picture. So sometimes it's just easier to work here at the top. And now all we have to do is just uh, center align this icon inside of the, of the circle. And this way this button looks awesome. Now we can group it, we can group the circle with the icon and let's place it somewhere around here on the right side of the slide. That looks awesome and we will make a clickable button, you know, out of this guy. And here in the selection pane, let's just call this group, for example, zipline trigger. So once we click on this button, we will get some additional information about the ziplining activity. So that's a super duper awesome. All right, so the next thing is I have this title, 
the activities and the call to action. So I'm gonna work with the title first. And now they wanted a more modern font, so let me take some time to figure out a font that I would like. All right, so the font I ended up going with was this Franklin Gothic Demi Condensed. Now, as you can see here, obviously it's very hard to see this text. So I automatically want to do Control A, change the font color to be white. And then it's also a little flat, so I want to give it some dimension. So a lot of times I'll play around with this text shadow. So I'll click on that. All right, so now let's move on to the actual activities. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually insert a shape and I'm gonna put it like so. All right, so now that I have this box in, I'm then going to change it to have a white fill. And then I'm gonna type in that text, our best selling activities. All I have to do is click on the shape, then you can type it in here. Another thing I want to do is, is I want to make sure that this box has a little bit of dimension because right now it's kind of flat looking. So I always go here, click on it, go to shadow and add a bottom shadow. And then I'm going to make it kind of exaggerated here. That way it stands out and it has a little bit more depth to it. All right, so now we have to focus on these activities that you're showing right here. So my first thought process when seeing these activities is that I want to probably make three boxes and then figure out how to fit the information inside of those boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a shape. I'm going to get rid of the fill. I'm going to add a white border to it. And now the background is still kind of showing up there. And I want to make sure that when I'm putting in text in those boxes that you can really see it. So I'm actually going to add a gradient to all three of these. So you can select all three of them and then go to gradient fill. So now what I can do is look for icons that will be filled inside each one of these boxes. So let's start with whitewater rafting. So I have the icon right here. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find icons for these two activities and then I'll get back to you guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so now we will have to insert more information about the zip lining. So I guess we can insert a photo related to zip lining. So here is the photo and let's uh, crop it. Let's make it a little bit smaller, something like that. I think this will be enough. Let's move it to the left side and we can rotate it horizontally so that this guy is, you know, looking to the right side. Let's actually crop this photo to this rounded, you know, rectangle shape. I think they, this way it looks uh, a bit more interesting. And actually let's add some shadow to this photo as well. So let's just choose this outside shadow and let's add blur of 20 points. Looks awesome. All right, now let's insert a rounded rectangle. So this is going to be the bottom part of this, uh, you know, info card. <laughs> let's call it info card. So let's just move like that. Let's make sure that this uh, rounded rectangle has the same roundness as the photo does. Just like that. And let's just cut off the top of this rounded rectangle. So let's just insert another rectangle. I select both of these two guys with the shift key. Go to merge shapes and choose subtract. And this way we get this uh, nice uh, bottom part. And inside of this shape we can insert the text. All right, so before we do that, let me just copy this uh, beautiful dark purple color from the shorts for this guy. All right, looks good. And let's make sure that we add shadow to this bottom part as well, so that the uh, photo and this bottom part has the shadow, the same shadow with 20 point blur. Awesome. And now we can insert some text. So once again, let me check. So let's just copy this word, uh, zip lining. Hit Control C or Command C to copy. Insert text box and paste this text, zip lining. So of course, let's uh, make it white. And our client has asked for some modern fonts. So let's try with the Montserrat font. For the weight, let's choose uh, semi bold. And for the font size, let's insert 24 points and let's space out the letters a little bit. All right. And for the letters, let's make all caps, all capital letters. 
and let's just do a little bit of alignment so that everything is aligned to the center all right and now we can quickly copy the zip lining text box by holding down the control key and for this second text box let's make it smaller let's change the font weight to regular and let's just copy and paste this text $35 per person all right and now all that's left to do for this uh, zip lining info card let's just align all of these objects to the center All right, so now we can drag with the mouse and select all of these guys and let's group them into one beautiful group and in the selection pane let's give it a name for example zipline zipline card so once we click on the trigger this card should appear and of course for that we have to add some animations because now when we click nothing happens we just move to the end of the show so we'll have to add some animations all right, so these are the three icons I ended up going with for each one of these activities. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna to try to find a background image for each one of these activities as well. All right, so these are the three images I found that go with each one of these activities. And my kind of thought process with this is these three boxes are coming up first, but then after that, I'm gonna have these three images show up and hover over the boxes with the information of how much it costs per person and the actual activity title. So what I wanna do is I wanna copy these three boxes and I'm just gonna put them off right here on the side right now and I'm gonna move these down as well and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually ungroup these and then I'm gonna shift these icons upward and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these background images behind each one of these boxes all right, so now that I like how that looks, I'm going to group each one of these. So I can just click and drag and then highlight. All right, so let's select our card, go to animations, and let's choose fly in animation, which comes from the bottom. And as you can see in the animation pane, we have this animation applied to the info card. So now the zip lining card comes from the bottom. And in the effect options, let's add smooth end so that it ends smoothly. That's awesome. All right, and let's make sure that, that this animation is triggered once we click on the zipline trigger. So let's check it out once again. So as you can see, when I click elsewhere, the presentation ends. So to fix that, let's go to slideshow, set up slideshow, and let's choose browsed at kiosk mode, which means that uh, when we click around, nothing happens, but only when we click on the button, the animation shows up. So this is what we need, and it works fine. Every time we click on the button, we get this animation. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add in the activity title and the pricing text. All right, so this is the actual text and pricing text that I went with for these background images. So if you see here, I used Franklin Gothic Demi just right here. And I did the same thing for all three. And then for this font text, I used Franklin Gothic Book and a font size of 36. And then I made the per person a lot smaller just because I don't really need to highlight that. And I made sure that this font color was a gold text because I wanted to stand out from the actual activity so people can see how much each price is without getting confused as to what to look at on the slide. So now that I have all three of these visuals, I just have them placed on top of the previous one. All right, so let's add additional animation to this zipline card. Let's add exit animation so that when this info card comes, it stays for three seconds and then it goes away automatically. So for this, let's uh, choose fly out animation, fly out to the top. Let's select smooth start for the timing. Here we add, for example, two second delay. So after two seconds, this card will fly out automatically. So here comes the card and then it goes away. It's working perfectly. Awesome. The next thing I need is to actually put in the CTA. So I'm gonna copy this in. So I need to obviously change up this font, make it look a little nicer. So I'm gonna play around to see what font I actually wanna use for this. All right, so this is actually what I came up with for this box right here. So how I came about this was 
I really want to make sure I emphasize this email right here, but I don't really care as much about this text. It is asking a question, but the main thing I want them to focus on is how they can actually contact us and see it clearly right there. So what I did was I made both of these fonts Helvetica, but I made this font size 16 and this font size 24. And then I also made this font color the same color as the pricing right here. And then for the actual box itself, I added in a gradient fill. So that way it's kind of darker on the bottom and it's getting lighter as it goes up. And then lastly, I added a very thin line that's the color white. All right, so that is the entire slide redesign. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so next I would like this background photo to become blurred and a little bit dark once the zip lining card appears so that we have better contrast. So for that, as you can see, we have duplicated the background photo and let's call this one blurred background. All right, let's move it below the card and the trigger. And let's just make sure that we align this blurred photo to the center. As you can see, it's not blurred yet, but we will take care of that right now. So first of all, let's just add some uh, darkness to this photo. So here in the brightness scale, let's just add minus 45%. And now let's just go to artistic effects and let's find this one, which looks like a blurred picture. And here I think we can leave 10 and it looks uh, nice, it's dark, it's blurred, and it gives better contrast. Now the last thing I need to do is actually bring it to life by animating it and so that everything isn't coming in at once, it's easier for the person to consume the information. So let's play around with the animations to get this to work well. All right, so I took some time to play around with the animations to make sure they were the way I wanted. And now I'm gonna show you guys how I came about that process. So for this New Zealand adventure text, what I ended up going with was animation of fade because I just wanna appear in the slide nice and easy and I have a duration of 0.5 seconds. So in order to add that animation in, all you have to do is click on the object you want to animate, make sure you're on the animations pane, and then click on fade, and then you can mess with it to make it with previous, and then also make sure it's a duration of whatever you'd like. For this example, I just made it 0.5 seconds. Next, I have this box right here that I animated. So for this box, what I ended up going with was another fade animation, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make sure that these three boxes are coming in as that top text is fading our best selling activities because I think it's going to look really nice that way. So what I did was I clicked on it, hit fade, I did a duration of 1.5 seconds. And then for these three boxes, it's all grouped, but these ones are individual. And I clicked on this one first, then this one, then this one, and I all chose fly in. And then what I did was for the first one, I made sure it had a delay of 0.25 seconds because I don't want it to come in with the title. And then I also made it have a duration of 1.5 seconds. For this one, a delay of 0.5 seconds and a duration of 1.5 seconds. And then this one, a duration of one second and delay of one second. So my thought process with this is, I want the title text to come in, then I want this to come in slowly as these are coming in from the right and they're flying in. So I'm gonna show you in presentation mode right now kind of what that looks like. You'll see New Zealand appears, our best-selling activities, and then those three come in nice and smooth. So that's just a nice clean way to introduce the activities on the slide. Now we have to add some animations. So let's add in the peer animations. Let's choose fade animation because we want this blurred background to appear only when the info card appears. So let's just move it right here. And let's make sure it starts with previous. All right, so we can check it out. This is how it looks. That's awesome. And now at the same time, we have to add exit animation. So once the zip lining card flies away, the blurred background fades away. So let's see if all of the animations are set correctly. Everything looks nice. So let's uh, give it a preview. All right, so once we click on the trigger, the card comes and the background gets dark. And once the card flies away, the background becomes bright and shiny again. So that's super duper awesome. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you how we can add a pulse or pulsing effect to our trigger button. So for that, let's just copy this circle shape. Let's make it fully transparent. And now in the animation pane, so let's select a circle and let's add a grow shrink animation to this circle. 
All right, let's make sure it starts uh, with previous. And we will want this pulsing uh, effect to repeat all the time. So in the timing options, let's go to repeat and let's choose until the end of slide. All right, for the duration, let's choose one second. So it will repeat each uh, second. So let me just move the circle right here so that we can see how this animation looks like. All right, and at the same time, we have to add exit fade animation. So let's make sure it starts with previous duration one second. So the same duration as the growth shrink animation. And again, for the repetition, let's set it to until the end of slide. So this is how the pulse effect looks like. And now let's actually go to selection pane and then let's give this oval a name. So let's call it pulse. All right, let's move it a little bit below the rest of the objects. If I can do it, hooray, okay. Now let's just align the pulse and the trigger to the center. And now we can preview it on the full screen and check it out how this pulsing effect looks like. So you can see we have this beautiful pulsing effect and now we can click on this button. And now we have this zip lining card which flies away. Super duper awesome. Now they want to make sure the activities are separate. So that's how we're going to achieve these next three boxes that you see right here. These boxes were aligned right on top of the other boxes. And I have a click animation for all three of them. And they're actually going to be a shape animation. And the effect option is going to be out and box. So what this is going to do is if I go into presentation mode and I'll hide this one again. You'll introduce the activities with just the icons, so it's very brief. They're not really too distracted. They're seeing what their options are, but they're not knowing the details yet. You hit one click, whitewater rafting, $50 per person. You hit another click, swimming with dolphins, $89 per person. And then the last click, zip lining, $35 per person. This is a nice way to really open up their eyes and have them individually focus on each one of those activities one at a time, instead of bringing it all in at once. Right, ladies and gentlemen, and now all that's left to do is to repeat the same steps to the second bubble, swimming with the dolphins. So I guess I'll just speed up a little bit, because I'll just do the same steps. So I'll have to create a trigger for the dolphin, and I'll have to create a card. So this is how it looks like. This is the zip lining card, and here's the swimming with the dolphins card. That's awesome. So now we have two clickable buttons. And now let's do the third one, which is white water rafting activity. All right, so first of all, I'm doing the trigger button and then I'm creating the card. Taking care of the animations. You can change up the position of the cards so that, you know, they fly where you want them to fly. And you can click on those buttons and the cards will come and they will hide automatically. That's awesome. All right, so we are pretty much finished with the activities. And now let me just uh, quickly do a logo or a title for this uh, slide, New Zealand Adventures. And I'll just add this uh, small icon of mountains. So now we have the clickable buttons for the activities. We have this slide title. And I think we have pretty much completed all of the requirements of our client. And the rest and the last thing that we have to do is this call to action. So let me just copy this red card and let me create this call to action card, which comes up from the bottom. Once we click on this button, book now. So once again, book now is a trigger. And once we click on this trigger, this uh, call to action pops up from the bottom. And after a couple of seconds, it goes down. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the finished slide. We have interactive slide. So hopefully the client likes this uh, interactive approach. We have all of the activities. We have the slide title and we have the call to action. And now I'm curious to see how PowerPoint Made Simple has redesigned the slide. And I'm sure he has done a wonderful work. All right, so now the last thing is 
we need to animate this bottom box. So what I decided to do with this bottom call to action box is I did a fly in and I went here to effect options and made sure it's from bottom. So for the ones that we did here, the effect option is actually coming from the right because I want to come from right to left. But for this one, I want to come from the bottom to the top. So I did a fly in and then chose it from bottom, made sure it was on click. I don't want it to show up yet for the activities and then I made a duration of 1.25 seconds and then I also made sure I went into effect options and added a little bit of bounce because when I want to come in I want to come in but then do a little bit of a bounce just for fun that, that's it really and also for these ones up here, I actually added in a smooth end. So I just maxed out the smooth end. All right, so now when I actually add in that animation, you're gonna see the fly in from the bottom, duration of 1.25 seconds on click, go into presentation mode, and now we can see the final product. So without further ado, let's go into presentation mode and see what it looks like. All right, so I have New Zealand Adventures, our best-selling activities. We have the three activities here. They don't know exactly what they are because it's just icons, but they're gonna give kind of a hint. We can then click into each one. And then lastly, if you do like these activities, make sure to contact us at this Gmail shown below. All right, so as you can see here, this is my version of redesigning the slide. Thanks once again for watching this video to see the different perspectives of two PowerPoint creators. It was definitely a lot of fun to take on this challenge, so huge thanks to PowerPoint Made Simple for suggesting this awesome idea. And definitely check out and subscribe to his channel, he's an awesome PowerPoint creator, link is in the video description. So everyone stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next video.